<clears throat> Hi guys, welcome to Spirit Mail. I'm Cheryl and this is Daily Mail episode 80. Um, I'm going to talk about, is this coronavirus God cursing the earth? That's what I want to talk about. I remember whenever I was uh, a kid, my dad worked two jobs. He worked offshore. And whenever he would come home, he would work on his seven, he worked seven and seven in the oil field. And whenever he would come home on his seven days off, he worked at a, a gas station in the next town over. So he worked 24, seven, seven days a week, basically. Um, and somebody said something, I don't remember, there was some kind of rumor that my dad did drugs or something. I was just totally offended. I was so offended and so hurt and so angry. I wanted to defend my dad. I may get a little emotional here. And I hear people saying stuff like, um, this is God's wrath because of the immorality in our world and because of this and that and God's cursing the land and God's you know, whatever, and if you're not a Christian, uh, beware. And th th there's just all kinds of stuff out there, and I am offended. For God. Now let me say this. I know in this community there's a lot of you who have been done with church a long time ago, and that's good. There's also a lot of you who, like me, have recently come out of church and are making your journey into uh, renewing your, your understanding of who you are and what's all going on out here. And there are some of you who still go to church. But I'm offended for God. And the reason I'm offended for God is because my background is Christianity. And in Christianity, Jesus is the example. But what church has done has taken Jesus and put him on a cross and made him a get out of jail free card. And they keep talking about God's wrath. But if we look at Jesus's life, if we read the words of Jesus, we see a different God, a God that Jesus called my father, a God that my experience has helped me to feel that that is my father too. So whenever people say that God is causing this, I'm offended because my father would not cause destruction like this on this earth. He created everything. Why would he go around destroying it? So there's a couple of scriptures that I just want to read to you to give you a peek into the nature of God. And that for you is whatever you want to call it. Uh, God, the force, the field, he really doesn't care because he doesn't have an ego. And I say he, it could be it, she, whatever. It's spirit. Spirit has no genitalia. I know that. But my relationship is dad, right? Whew. Sorry. So there's a couple scriptures that I want to read to you. I just had them. I promise I did. <laughs> I've been like for a week, for a, a whole week or so, been going through all these scriptures trying to find what I'm looking for. Okay, so here's the first one: John five twenty two. Uh, Jesus is talking about uh, judgment, right? And and I don't I, I I don't have all the before and after scriptures, but I just picked out a few scriptures that I really want you to contemplate on. For the Father. 
and Jesus is talking about his father for the father judges no man but has committed all judgment unto the son so what he's saying is God doesn't judge all of this going on down here this is Jesus the example the one that the whole church built a religion called Christianity around. And this is a peek into his father's life based on his personal experience with that father. For the father judges no man, no man, no man, but has committed all judgment to the son. That's John 5.22. A little bit later in John 8 15 the son Jesus says you judge according to the flesh I judge no man so I'm offended whenever people say God is punishing this world uh, somebody said I read in an article that it was uh, all the Trump haters that called this virus in because they hated Trump people really I'm gonna say this again these two scriptures and then I have one more for you <coughs> John 5:22. For the Father judges no man, no man, but committed all judgment unto the Son. This is the Son speaking, right? And then in John 8, 15, he says, you judge according to the flesh. In other words, we look at what people do. We judge what we think is immoral in other people. We judge according to the flesh. But I... This is Jesus speaking. I judge no man. No man. And then in Luke 6, 35 through 36, this is what Jesus says. Again, he's given us a peek into this God that created absolutely everything the original source of absolutely everything, the spirit that flows in and out and around, through, above, under, all over, everything that lives inside of you and lives inside of me and lives inside every single human being that walks the face of this earth. This Jesus, the Son, the only begotten Son of God, according to Christianity, right? This Jesus is giving us another peek into his father's life. Luke 6, 35 and 36. And he says, but love your enemies. Do good and lend and lend hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the most high. So he's saying we're sons too, right? You will be sons of the Most High when we love our enemies. Then the other thing he says is, uh, for he, speaking of his father, that's the relationship he has with the Creator. I understand it. That's how I feel. For he is kind even to the unthankful and the evil. <laughs> Therefore, be merciful. Just like your father is also merciful. Guys, there is nothing merciful about this coronavirus. There's nothing merciful about how some people are treating other people because of this coronavirus. So I, I felt really strongly that I wanted to come here tonight and just say to you guys, because for me, it's like I have to defend God and Jesus 
against things that people are saying because the things that some people are saying uh, would cause others to want to run away from a God. Why would I want to serve a God that's going to throw some curse down on this land? Now, I understand in the Old Testament, there's all kinds of stuff about that. I don't want to go there. I'm talking about what Jesus said because he is my mentor. He is my teacher. He's the example that I want to follow. So I'm going to believe what he has to say. And he says his father is merciful. His father is kind even to the unthankful and the evil. His father is kind. So this coronavirus does not come from that one source that created everything. I love you guys so much. And there's that is my truth. Let me say that. That is my truth. There's a lot of people out there with their own truths and their own ideas about what's going on. That is my truth. That did not come from my daddy. That did not come from my father. That did not come from the original creator of everything in this world. That coronavirus did not come from there. And my brother, Jesus, said it. He said it. So I'm going to end this daily mail. And I'm going to ask God to give us a message. The original source, the original energy of everything. God, I thank you for who you are or what you are. Original source of all that is. I thank you for that. Please give us a PS for this message. Please show me clearly. What could I have said better? Or what is your extra little something something? Or what did I leave out? Thank you for clear and concise messages. I thank you for love, light, and prosperity. And I thank you for clarification, confirmation, and validation. So here's a card of celebration, right? Um, it's the Three of Cups. Cups, cups are about an emotional, uh, it's about love, it's about that kind of thing. And there's three people here, right? And, and for me, the three is always about um, our creator and our spirit team and us. So it's a holy collaboration. And, and so for whatever reason, I feel like there's a holy collaboration. There's a holy celebration going on. Uh, and perhaps it's because people are waking up. Because people are realizing because of their own supernatural experiences that who or what God is. But there's a celebration going on because there's things changing in our planet. <laughs> this card always reminds me of that verse, lest we become as little children, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within us. And we have to understand that, that it's not out there somewhere, right? Um, but as we grow up, uh, we hear the things that we're taught. And I am grateful for the experiences that I had. I really, really am. Um, but, but this right here, that we have to come with this pure innocence and expectation in our heart space and allow spirit to minister to us and to reteach us possibly, right? Uh, and we have to come with that innocent expectation that, th that they will right okay so I want to say one more thing about this card real quick um, whenever we're growing up right and we're being we're learning lessons and stuff and our parents shake their finger at us and they say don't you do that or else 
don't you go to that dance without my permission, without me knowing, or else you're not you're going to be grounded. Don't you, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, even whenever we are within um, a religion, and we start to have these supernatural experiences, right? We we will hear a pastor say, or a preacher say, or a Sunday school teacher, or an elder, or whatever, somebody, a leader in our church will say, um, or somebody that we know and trust will repeat it, uh, beware of familiar spirits. Don't trust, don't trust that experience you had. That That's not in the Bible. That's nowhere in the Bible. You can't trust that. So basically what they're saying is, and we go back, it triggers us, you know, oh, we've been bad. It shames us. It makes us feel like we've done the wrong thing. I understand that. I experienced that too. But Spirit's saying, become as little children. Don't allow that to trigger us, but have that pure expectation that Spirit talks to us. That when Jesus says, knock and the door shall be open, seek and you shall find, ask and you will receive. That that we trust his words when he says that. And I feel like Spirit saying within each one of us, uh, within each one of us, he has prepared us for whatever path we walk, right? He is our resolve. And I say he, again, I know some people are offended by that. He, it, she, whatever it is for you is within us. The energy that created worlds the energy that creates worlds, Abraham Hicks says it, the energy that creates worlds lives inside of us. And all we have to do is open ourselves up to have that intimate relationship with that energy. And it is an intimate relationship. It is an intimate relationship. This energy that created everything is so... Um, impersonal but so personal it's really hard to explain but again Jesus who Christianity and I speak about Christianity specifically because that's my that's where I came from and I don't I don't in any way want to offend anybody but sometimes I just really feel like right now guys I know of some 85-year-old people, a couple, who's scared to death to die because they don't know if they've been good enough to go to heaven. There's something wrong with that. Faithful, faithful, faithful Christians, and they're scared. Can you imagine as a parent... If you, you're the parent, can you imagine lording or, or uh, whatever the fear of torment over your kids their entire lives? That if they're not good enough, you're, gonna, you're going to sentence them to an eternity of torment? And Jesus said, as much as we love our kids, God loves us even more than that. So if, if I wouldn't do that to my kids, what makes me think? How could I possibly think that I have the capacity to love more than the Creator does? Okay, guys. I had to I had to share that with you. I love you guys so much. Again, if it comes to who's who's right and who's wrong and I hate to even use that. 
But if a, if, if a pastor or a preacher or a priest or any kind of religious leader tells me something that does not line up with what Jesus himself said, I have to disregard what that pastor said. And I have to defer to what Jesus said. That's me. I love you guys very much. Go out and have a super duper day.